Hi, I'm Zor. Welcome to Indie Zor Education. Um, this is the fifth out of six uh, lectures in a mini series about how uh, trigonometric functions um, are uh, calculated or get their values um, when the angle is one of the basic angles we, we really can calculate it algebraically. Um, so, this is about second, number five. We have still cosecant. That would be number six lecture. So, secant and cosecant uh, definitions. So, let's start with the secant today. Um, by definition, this is one over cosine of x. So, um, you know my preference not to memorize um, anything, or at least to memorize as little as possible. So I will derive the values of secant for many different basic angles based on something very, very simple, which I'm sure everybody remembers. And this is that in the right triangle, if one of the angles is 30 degrees, then the opposite catechus is one half of the hypotenuse. Now, my hypotenuse is equal to one in this particular case, because I will apply it to unit circle. So that's my unit circle. Now, obviously, this uh, catechus, uh, using the Pythagorean theorem, square of this plus square of this is equal to square of hypotenuse. Uh, from here, x squared is equal to 3 fourths, and x is equal to square root of 3 over 2. So we know that too. That's simple. No memorization. Everything is derived. That's square root of 2. Of, th of 3 over 2. Now, another case, also very simple, is when it's 45 degrees. In this case, this angle is also 45 degrees, so if this is hypotenuse equal to 1, then this is x and this is x, x squared plus x squared equals to 1, x is equal to 1 half x squared, and x is equal to square root of 2 over 2. So that's another thing which we have to remember how to derive. So these are the only thing which you really should be very familiar with, and I'm sure you are. So everything else can be derived using the considerations of symmetry um, and the properties of the functions like odd or even, etc. So let's start. The angle 2 pi over 3. So let me divide each quadrant into three more or less equal pieces. So this is 120 degrees, which is 2 pi over 3. Now, this angle is pi over 3, which is 60 degrees, counting from the positive direction of the x-axis towards the vector to the point. Now this is pi over 6, which is 30 degrees, and in between you have pi over 4, which is 45 degrees. Now, using these properties, this is one half, because my uh, radius is a hypotenuse, which is in the unit circle equals to one. Now, this is also one half, because if this is 60 degree, this is 30 degrees, right? So this is the catechus, which is opposite to the angle of 30 degrees. Now, this is square root of 2 over 2, and 
finally this is square root of 3 over 2. And this is also square root of 2 over 2, and this is square root of 3 over 2. So that's what we've got from these properties. Everything else we will try to derive using the considerations of symmetry, as I said. So, 120 degrees, this is an angle we are talking about. And we have to find what's the secant of this uh, particular uh, angle. Now, obviously, this is 90 degrees plus 30 degrees. Now, P over 3, 60 degrees, is 90 minus 30 degrees. So these angles are symmetrical relatively to the y-axis, from which follows that these points also are symmetrical relative to the y-axis. Now, the coordinate of this point is x is equal to 1 half, and y is equal to square root of 3 over 2. Now, the cosine is the abscissa. So, 1 over cosine, which is, in this case, uh, is 1 over 1 half, which is 2. But let's calculate the uh, coordinates of this point. Now, since these points are symmetrical, and that was proved in, in the, uh, one of the uh, lectures where I introduced these basic angles. Um, so the symmetry means that they are on the same perpendicular to uh, the y-axis, which means their y-coordinate is the same. But we are interested in x-coordinate, which is abscissa. And the x-coordinate, obviously, is um, opposite in sign, but uh, the same in absolute value. So if this is 1 half and square root of 3 over 2, this is minus 1 half and square root of 3 over 2. That's coordinates. Now, if you know the coordinates, you obviously know um, sine and cosine of the function because the cosine is by definition of abscissa, and therefore 1 over cosine is 1 over minus 1 half. So in this case, I have the value of minus 2. 1 over minus 1 half. Great. Next, we have uh, 135 degrees, which is 3 pi over 4. Exactly similar consideration. Now, the pi over 4, 45 degrees, is 90 degree minus 45. 135 is 90 degree plus 45. So, angles are symmetrical. That's why the points are symmetrical and exactly the same situation. The ordinate is exactly the same and the abscissas are opposite in sign but the same in absolute value. Which means that for this particular I will have minus square root of 2 over 2 and square root of 2 over 2. Now, the cosine is minus square root of 2 over 2, which means that 1 over cosine is minus 2 over square root of 2, that's square root of 2. Next. Next is this, which is 150 degrees, or 5 pi over 6 radians. Now, 150 is 90 plus 60. 90 minus 60 is 30 degrees. And you know the coordinate of this point. So it's square root of 3 over 2 and 1 half. So in this case, I will have minus square root of 3 over 2 and 1 half. And that's why the, uh, the secant is inverse to minus square root of 3 over 2, which is 2 uh, over square root of 3. You multiply by square root of 3, so it's this. Minus 2 square root of 3 divided by 3. That's inverse of 
square root of minus square root of three root. Next, pi. Now, with a pi, you don't really have to resort to uh, symmetry or anything else. You know the coordinate of this point is minus one, zero, right? The abscissa is minus one, and the ordinate is zero. And we need an inverse to a cosine, inverse to abscissa, which is minus one. That's pi. Or 180 degree, if you wish. Next, minus p over six. All right. Um, yeah, I don't have to wipe it out. This is minus pi over six. Minus 30 degrees, or minus pi over six. Now, you can use the symmetry relatively to the x-axis, because this is uh, plus 30, this is minus 30. It's just the direction, but the angles are um, equal to each other, which means that these points are symmetrical, and they project into the same abscissa, and the ordinates are uh, opposite in sign, but the same in absolute value. Well, we are interested in abscissa, so um, the coordinate of this point would be one half, and coordinate would be, uh, no, sorry, abscissa would be square root of three over two. And coordinate is, in this case, one half, in this case is minus one half. So, um, what's the uh, secant of this function? That's inverse to square root of 3 over 2, which is 2 over square root of 3 multiplied by square root of 3 numerator and denominator. It would be 2 square root of 3 over 3. Next, uh, minus pi over 4, which bisects. It's minus 45 degrees, minus pi over 4, and obviously it would be square root of 2. I don't write it here. Um, so it's um, abscissa is the same, which means square root of 2 over 2. Ordinate is minus square root of 2 over 2. So the, um, the secant is inverse to this, which is 2 over square root of 2, which is square root of 2. Next is minus 60 degrees, which is minus pi over 3. Obvious symmetry is with pi over 3. So, the same um, abscissa, which is 1 half, and ordinate would be opposite in sign, which is minus square root of 3 over 2, and inverse to abscissa would be 2. That's the secant. Minus pi over 2, this point. Okay, now this point is easy because you already know that abscissa is 0 and ordinate is minus 1, which means the secant is undefined because you cannot divide by zero. Next, minus 2 pi over 3, which is this. It's minus 120 degrees, minus 2 pi over 3. Obvious symmetry with this point. So this point has minus 1 half square root of 3 over 2. I retain abscissa, which is minus one half, and I change the sign of ordinate, which is square minus square root of three over two. That's the coordinates. And we are interested in invert, invert, inverting abscissa, which is minus two. Next is this, which is minus 135 degrees, or minus uh, 3 pi over 4, and this is symmetry with this guy, 
So I retain abscissa, which is minus square root of 2 over 2. Uh, invert the sign of uh, ordinate is also minus square root of 2 over 2. So my uh, secant is inverting minus square root of 2 over 2, which is square root of 2 with a minus sign. That's my secant. And next is this guy, which is minus 150 degree, which is minus 5 pi over 6. Now, obvious symmetry is with this guy. I know this coordinate, so in this case I will have minus square root of 3 over 2. I retain the abscissa and change the ordinate. And this should be inverted, and the result is minus 2 square root of 3 divided by 3. That's my secant. Well, we covered all the angles. Um, well, I specify minus pi, but that's the same as plus pi. We go to the same point, so it's the same um, secant. So, my point was that knowing the, this law of symmetry, uh, that if angles are the same, uh, are symmetrical relative to some vertical or horizontal axis, then the position of the point is very easily uh, calculatable from one to another. You just either change the sign of uh, abscissa or change the sign of ordinate. And knowing the coordinates of the three basic points, where everything is from 0 to 90 degree, everything else can be calculated based on these considerations of symmetry. And how to calculate the, these coordinates? That's easy. You have these two basic triangles. That's all you have to know, all you have to remember. Everything else is derived with Pythagorean theorem or something like this. All right. So um, I do encourage you to go back to unisor.com, uh, take a look again at the notes to this lecture. Try to calculate all these values yourself using this unit circle and considerations of symmetry and check if you have the right answers. Uh, I think it's a very good exercise. Good luck.